Once we take Egypt out of the game, there'll be a couple of advantages that we can actually see here. And the first of that is that we don't have to worry about the religious victory. As soon as uh, Cleopatra's out of the game, that religion is null and void, doesn't matter anymore. That, if nothing else, is a really good thing. Secondly though, all of these grievances will disappear because all of my allies, they, they really don't mind. This war is, is totally fine and chill and nobody's gonna actually have grievances with Egypt once we sort of start this. I mean, Coupe, you've broken out of this war. Come on, don't do that. I want everyone to pull in, yeah. Okay, Australia's now in on the war as well. They've only got eight military strength. So what they think they're gonna do in this war, I don't know. Oh, there you go. I actually have a prophet. I can make my own religion if I wanted to. We will hold on to that because that actually is going to be very useful for us slightly later into the game. Here is the coal mine. Oh, seven production on a tile. Again, Corinth. Just keep printing those builders. Printing gives me one level of diplomatic visibility over Egypt, so we can get uh, a nice plus three combat bonus against them now. Effective, which is lovely. Start bringing my samurai back down now. We're just going to give Egypt as many different things to try and shoot at the same time as they can, just to confuse their defenses somewhat. We are almost done here. Egypt have fortified the defenses in this city a little bit and you can see the samurai that I've sent in are, well, they're being killed one by one, but the Corsa that was protecting the city and giving it most of its combat strength has actually now just left the city. That is a mistake. That has reduced the combat strength of the city by 10. So we can get a round of attacks in now and the Corsa can't come back in to stop me. I might lose that samurai, but again, we don't mind. It's all about right now doing the damage whilst we can. I'm also just going to treat, oh no, this is on fire again. Why is everything on fire again? I'm gonna treat Kyoto to an electronics factory. This will give me three production in the city and it will spread it to six tiles around, which is lovely. But when the city powers itself, which hopefully will happen soon, it'll go up to plus eight. And that plus eight does extend to all the cities around it, which is just a lovely thing. I'm also going to temporarily switch out Republican Legacy for Invention. And I'm going to switch out Natural Philosophy for Where's the Wonder card? Corvée. I could do better than Corvée to be fair, that's actually not a very good card. Fine, we'll put Natural Philosophy back in. But Invention is going to give me a lot more engineer points. I want to rush through all of the medieval era engineers I can. In fact, actually, no, the next one is the Renaissance one, isn't it? So we will have missed out on one. Uh, the district. Ah, oh, that's an annoying engineer to miss out on. Never mind. What about the merchants? Did we get all of them? We did. Merchants we did a better job on. Okay, that's kind of a success then. Oh, there it is. Gothic architecture. Lovely stuff. How many great people points are we generating now towards engineers? A lot. A lot. A, a huge amount. Let's just get in a Seador just so that I can guarantee the AI doesn't get them. We've gone on to Renaissance era engineers now. That's wonderful. Okay, I'm feeling a lot better about that now. I believe that is Egypt out of the game. So we've conquered an entire wing other than ourselves of this snowflake island as well as controlling the middle of the continent as well. We are in a really good position here. And hopefully nobody has much in the way of grievances against me. It looks like 66 grievances which will expire in 10 turns. People will forget about what I've done very quickly. Don't complain. Don't complain. How long until in theory we could go to war again? Four turns. We're going to need stronger units to do that though. So let's just, yeah, I think I'm going to beeline chemistry, research labs. Let's get the science going. Uh, build an armory. We've got enlightenment. That's gone. Two crossbow. Always check your Eurekas. So if I can get a library and two banks and two neighborhoods, then we can start boosting this. There is the armory. I'm not going to have enough gold to do that anytime soon. So we'll just hold off that. So now the focus in my empire is going to be all on generating science. Science, 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 science. We want to basically tech up so that we can get chemistry by turn 180, roughly. That'll be the most amazing thing. Newton would be amazing for that. A three library, a three university, and universities providing two science is an amazing thing. Also, Marco Polo. Okay, trade routes to that city are increased, so we'll put this one in Kyoto as well. The good thing as well is that we are starting to improve luxuries en masse. All of this new captured territory. Look at all of these that I can sell now. Oh, economically, we are becoming powerhouses. Sell anything that isn't pinned down and make sure that it benefits my empire. As a priority, I want Forbidden City in my empire if I can do it. 
that wild card policy slot is going to be very helpful for me. And if I've got a Seer door, that's 215 production I can use three times. Yeah, Forbidden City should be rushed with that. And with Melbourne flipping, that's it. We control the centre of this continent. That's a lovely thing. Oh, and Yokib is now flipping as well. Um, oh, that musket, okay, that musket is very frustrating. Just stop. I'm trying to build the University of Sancor, don't you know? Honestly, it's the rudeness. It's the rudeness of the situation that does me in more than anything else. Oh, here's the coal power plant, by the way. Eight bonus production. Now, I said I would explain where that comes from. If we have a look, it's a plus four industrial zone. That is doubled with the policy card I've got in at the moment. Craftsman, so it's giving plus eight, and the coal power plant gives me production equal to the adjacency. So that industrial zone will be worth 16 production, all things said, as well as providing power to my electronics factory, which will boost things even further. So Kyoto now has 71 production. Needs a bit of housing, so there's more I can do in the city to make sure that it's doing even better. But yeah, not a bad, not a bad little city. I could have really, really used the engineer though to give myself more districts. That would have been a fantastic little, little buff for that city, but never mind. Two extra envoys. What am I going to do with you? I would quite like Venice on side, thinking about it. But I'll put one into it for now. Just make sure that my banks and shipyards will give me a little bit more gold when I build those. And we'll hang on to the others for now. Not a bad thing, that. Although, do I want more faith? No, I've already got two city-states suzerains of faith anyway, so that's fine. And there is Kilwa. This is an amazing pickup for me. If I can get both scientific city-states on side, that'll be 30% science in my capital with Pingala and 15% science in every other city. If you're struggling with deity, it's worth upping the size of the map a little bit, maybe to standard or even to large, to make sure that you get two scientific city-states, because this technique is really effective on any map with them. But you can see Anshan will give me science for every great work of writing. That's lovely. I'm just going to boost Boost both to six and you can see, bam, kill what will start to come through. 239, that's a lovely thing. And even better, I can pop Newton, who I've just picked up, into this campus. Give myself a three library and a reinforced university and all other universities will give plus two. Beautiful, very, very lovely indeed. Now, to pick up a beautiful plus five theatre square in Tokyo, just to make sure that that city grows nicely and a lovely plus five industrial zone in this city as well. Finally, the infrastructure is making sense. At this point, being friends or not being friends with the AI is sort of up to you. I was gaining diplomatic favour from the alliances, but I also want to kind of keep the idea of a military victory open, a domination victory, because once you hit the point that your science is so far ahead, like I am equal science to the Mayans, two ahead of Australia, and then seven ahead of Greece and Coupe. And I've got a lot more science per turn. Now we have the option to actually go domination. And yeah, this might be quite effective. Bologna, for instance, would let me levy a pretty almighty massive army. And actually, now that I have both um, Kilwa and also the Apadana, I picked up a lot of different envoys there. So that envoy as well, perfect, gives me control of Venice. So we have options here. Oh, just quickly, I'm just going to chop out the University of Sancor. So if people send me trade routes to the city, I get a little bit of extra science and gold, or no, they get the science and gold, but I get two science for every trade route to the city, including my own, and I also get domestic trade routes for faith as well. Like it's a really, really good combination. You can see these routes are now worth five food, four production, eight gold, six science, four culture, one faith. But I kind of answered my own question earlier. I'm going to get the foreign ministry and we're going to actually levy some city-states to do the damage for us. I think Bologna, let's send all of these muskets in the caravel to wipe out Australia. So what we'll do is I will make sure that I have open borders with everybody. That will make sure that they at least all stay amicably to me. Though admittedly, having them crawl around my empire is a bit annoying. I'll, I'll, I'll let them off for now. But I'm going to start moving my army around. Oh uh, yeah, Australia should be pretty easy to take out. They've only got 26 military strength. Here is Forbidden City. Plus one wildcard policy slot. I like wildcard policies. It lets you do absolutely anything with them. And if you're looking for a science victory or a domination victory, wildcard policies come in very, very handy. 
In fact, let's have a quick look. Invention. I mean, I want to get Republican Legacy back in right now. That's awesome. Raj gives me more science. Colonial Offices is giving me a little bit of food growth. Not a huge amount there. I'm going to put Colonial Taxes in. I prefer the production and the gold. Gothic Architecture is useful. I'm not denying that, but Natural Philosophy will give me a little bit of what I'm after. And Rationalism it never shows as high as it actually is. It, it gives you more of a bonus than the mod will tell you. It says plus for but it's 50% extra science from buildings in any city with 15 pop or with four or higher um, adjacency so if we just have a look at this already that library in the university in Tokyo that is receiving the 50% bonus so that would be plus one and plus it's so already that's plus three so, so the card it's just it's clearly not right it's clearly not right Here's Newton, by the way. Boom! 374 science per turn. Oh yeah, that's that's pretty decent. I'll take that. Kyoto also finally reached 13 population, which means we can put one more district down. Uh, th I mean, there is a plus seven theater square there. I, I'm looking at that and I am incredibly tempted by it, but I really probably should put the diplomatic quarter in this city because yeah, that'll make the trade routes a lot better. That one building will make every trade route to this city, one food, one production, one science, one culture, two gold higher. And I've got 11 of those routes coming in already. So it's a big difference that. Yeah, I'll put the Diplomatic Quarter in. I, I think it's probably worth doing, much as I find it a little bit painful to get rid of that mine. It was a very good mine. And Jokeb has flipped to me. Beautiful. There's a lot of luxuries here, a nice holy site, another trade route, all the good stuff. And hopefully, yeah, look at that. We're starting to put pressure now on the mines even more. They're in a normal age, by the way, a normal age, and they cannot hold me back. It's exceptional. Uh, there is Bologna. I'm just levying their units. In Gaza Gamu is only 120. So we might as well do that at the same time. And Jerusalem has no army. Okay, fine. Well, that's a bit of a letdown, but never mind. Next up is Moksha. I need you to get into a city that is struggling to grow again. There's got to be at least a couple. Uh, Jokib just picked you up, but there's potential in this city. She needs to unlock it. Islam is still the religion in my trading city and that's Feed the World and that is really very interesting to me. Feed the World would give me housing and food and this city is feeling a little cramped at the moment so that, that could be brilliant. Let's get the consulate for now up to 394 science by turn 144. Do you remember I said 100 by 100? These are the sort of uh, growth stats that you are looking for. Actually, you know what? I think I might be blocked from taking over these Australian cities by the barbarians. They're tough. They're really tough they're unexpectedly tough tougher than they should be <laughs> to put it another way oh i forgot to mention these trade routes are now up to six food five production seven science i mean yeah they're getting they're getting good now oh mustering mustering at your borders i i wouldn't worry about it i'm sure it's just a coincidence oh actually the barbs didn't attack me that is a relief in itself. Okay, I need to actually find a way to do this. I'm going to actually attack from the other direction. If I can stay away from the barbarians, I think it's worth the couple of turns it will take to get my army round. But if I can attack from the west coast, I think I'm going to have a lot more luck. Uh, Filippo is up next. Oh, perfect. Filippo will rush. Patala Palace, which is the next wonder I'm building. I do want Big Ben, though. Is there anywhere that'll be able to build Big Ben for me? Oh, Kyoto will be able to get Big Ben. Oh, perfect. Okay, just before I forget, I'll pop Big Ben down. That'll give me uh, most of the wonders that have given me extra policy slots. I don't actually know if the Alhambra has been built. I don't remember seeing it. Mm, I haven't found it if it is built. So just checking into my empire in the middle of the Renaissance era. You can see because I've been focusing on getting a commercial hub up in every city or a harbor, one or the other, we have 14 to 15 trade routes going at the moment. I am focusing on getting lots of campuses up as well. And I've focused in getting industrial zones into sort of key central placements so that now that I'm getting coal power plants and electronics factories and all these sort of things, they hit a lot of cities. So far, so good. I need to put a little bit of infrastructure up into my Egyptian holdings to the north. And there's a couple of cities that aren't giving me trade routes. Not many, but a couple. It'll all start to get better. Look, we've actually finished settling finally my own little wing. I didn't put a lot of pressure on myself to do that, admittedly. It wasn't like super essential I did that. 
Well, that's natural history as well, which means we've unlocked water parks, zoos, aquariums, basically the bedrock of all the things you need to make yourself ecstatic in every city. Ecstatic in every city gives you 20% yields everywhere. Really worth doing. And the first place I'm going to stick a zoo is in this city. It's right next to the Colosseum. It doesn't quite hit all of the cities in the middle, but it makes a pretty good attempt at it. Uh, eight city centres, including one from Coupe, which doesn't count, so seven. But hey, that is pretty good. Water parks, I do want to see if I can find a couple of locations for those because they hit over a much larger area. Oh no, shock horror, we're going to war with Australia. Now they do have double production whilst this happens, but honestly, it's worth just nipping in whilst the barbarians are giving them such a problem. Look, I've got Greece on side as well. And Coupe. It's just uh, the Mayans didn't want to get involved in this betrayal of sorts, I guess, but that's probably for the best. So we've already got three muskets by Canberra, which is lovely, and I can bring this caravel to there, this caravel to there, and go one, two attacks onto Hobart like that. I'm hoping this will be a pretty quick defeat. Economics unlocks Big Ben for me. That's handy because Kyoto wanted to put that very wonder down. I think I've got to build a regular bank first though, so we'll do that. But Big Ben would be an amazing addition here. Canberra, I, yeah, I mean, this is really not going to be too much of a problem. There's the city taken already and I can use my musket just to fight that off briefly. And then the caravels make a second wave of attacks at this city. I'm hoping next turn we can do that. Placeable parts own three line inventory. I don't know what they are, so it's actually quicker for me to just go straight to chemistry right now. Ah, oh, damn, they put walls up right at the last minute. Okay, that's slightly frustrating, but what can you do? I'd like to generate fewer grievances, and last time diamonds was put down, let's put instead... Oh, I don't know. Yeah, cotton will do. I, I, we're not going to be able to influence things. People have a lot more voting power than we do. Oh, I put Temple of Artemis in my stolen Mayan city because I think my trading city had two luxuries within four tiles of it that would have been improved and that will get two amenities into that city. So I was like, yeah, that works really well. Look, little snuffly truffles to the north of that. Beautiful. Oh, I get double grievances. Oh, and duplicates of tobacco grant um, luxuries as well. Hang on. I have five copies. Oh, yes. Tobacco suddenly is a good thing. I'm going to keep all of my tobacco now. Military emergency. No, 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 no. This may go through. This may actually go through because Australia can be quite persuasive. Oh, the Mayans have gone for me. Interesting. They have 680 military strength, including bombards right on my borders there. Okay, so we will have to start thinking about producing some units. Now, inventory, honestly, are useless to me, but anti-tank crews, they will be very powerful, so we'll just keep an eye out for those. Coupe is at war with both of these people, so, oh, I was thinking about just making a friendship with them and going for an alliance. They don't want it. That's a bit of a shame. Never mind. You can see why they might not. Okay, Hobart's taking some damage now. We are getting rid of these walls, but it is proving problematic. Here is Armani, by the way. I feel like I have more houses, or sorry, more cities that don't have any housing. I'll put it into Canberra for now. Lovely vote. Looking good. Civil Engineering is a brilliant card, but I want to now go towards nationalism so I can get myself cause. There is replaceable parts. Okay, our farms are a little bit better now, but as you can see, like, we just need to stop Australia from being problematic and we should be fine. The city is now um, sieged again, which is good, and these muskets are delivering a much more powerful attack than my caravels are, and the city's under siege, so it can't heal anymore, which is brilliant. Instantly builds a bank and a market. Oh, wonderful. That's a good merchant, actually. One attack two attack and three attack oh hobart is so close let's just actually do that there we go australia's out of the game it was a nasty little wall they threw up at the end and that just serves me right for not attacking with siege equipment but that was just with a borrowed army none of these were my units which is just lovely now that trader from canberra is unfortunately going to make its way through this absolutely barbarian infested area and i don't like the sound of that so i might just bring you back 
to Kyoto and make sure that this city actually has at least one uh, route that is useful. So late game, one of the things you should try and remember to use are medics. These things increase healing by about 20 per turn. And if you stick them in the middle of a bunch of units that are healing, they will be back into the action so much quicker than if you just left them to heal automatically. It's a really handy thing. I just realized that the city I stole from the Mayans can actually build Alhambra. So that is another thing I'm going to be using. I used one charge to rush Patala Palace and then back I come for this one. Now, as you can see, we still have some units in my territory, but we are hitting them down pretty quickly now. And we're going to pick up another city, this time from Coupe. Love it. And that is nationalism we just boosted. Now, how are my great engineers coming? Well, they're coming along very well. Let's just rush through Leonardo da Vinci. Next up is, oh, Ada Lovelace. This gives me two more. This would be brilliant. Two more districts in Kyoto that I can build. That is going to massively help me to grow that city out. Oh, that musket is dead as well. Good. That means I can finally release this trade route. It's been sat in the city waiting to go for a long time. Oh, but Ada Lovelace is going to be brilliant for this city. Let's just get going with Big Ben to start with. And you can see I can do 315 production each time. I think, oh, which one is better? Which one do I want more? I think Alhambra is more likely to get stolen. So I will use the production on on. Alhambra and then Kyoto will sort of come in later. So now that I've got chemistry, I can build anti-tank crews, which are very, very powerful. Land unit wise, I won't need much more than that. I think getting an air force in is going to be the next best thing. So whenever I say with war, it's always worth getting an air force as soon as you can, because an air force will beat any units on the ground and any units at sea. They are incredibly powerful. So we'll go flight, steam power, radio, and then advanced flight. Right now, it's all about using the momentum of my science to just rush through whilst we have the advantage here. I've taken over three prongs of the um, snowflake, and I think Greece is probably the easiest target other than me at the moment. Sorry, other the it's the easiest target for me to go for. The Mayans are technologically probably my, I wouldn't say equal, I think I've pulled away a little bit from them. Yeah, I'm five techs ahead now. So bombers over the top, those are going to make short work of their walls. They've only got ancient walls, but that's a 76 strength city. It's going to be tougher to get in there. Actually changed my mind. I'm going to just quickly get military academies before getting advanced flight because in Gazagami means that I can be building cores and armies in Yokib and then send them immediately over to go and defeat the Mayans. I like that as an idea. Suddenly that sounds like a better plan than what I had before. There is Patala Palace, a diplomacy policy slot, and a diplomatic victory point. The victory point is not very useful, but the diplomacy policy slot really is. As I say, we are becoming more and more isolated from the world, and we need to do everything ourselves. And if our government has lots and lots of bonus slots in it, my word, can we do a lot of fun things with them. In this case, I'm going to put back in colonial offices, extra food and extra loyalty in all of the cities that aren't on my original continent. Continent split's a little bit strange on this one. It's basically these six cities and then Corinth down there are the ones on my continent. Everything else is on a different continent. So that really is quite fun. Mendeleev gives me the Eureka for chemistry. and. Fortunately, that is one I've already got, but you also get the Eureka for Ballistics, and I didn't have that, so that is good. We're building so many campuses, so many libraries, so many research labs now, Ferris wheels, all of the infrastructure now is coming into my empire, and it's coming in quick. Okay, here we go. Anti-tank crew core. Bam. Suddenly, my cities are a lot more powerful, and that is an 85 strength unit that I can use to slam into the Mayan walls. Oh, I'm looking forward to this. Alhambra, one military policy slot this time. So we've got three of the bonus four policy slots available in the game. That's nice. We like that a lot. Now it gives the defensive abilities of a thought, which I guess is also a thing that you can use from time to time. But there's flight boosted for us. We've got steam power, radio advanced flight. Yeah, we, we are now starting to absolutely push through the text. We've got craftsmen. What else are we going to put in? I'm going to say limes because we're building a few buildings in our Australian territory, which is nice. Invention, public and legacy, rationalism. It's all good. We'll keep those for now. Big Ben is obviously going to be a big pickup for us, but we can wait for a second on that one. Well, here we go. A great merchant that gives me three envoys at a city state, which is very useful when you need Armar back on your side. Lovely stuff. Over you pop, kind sir. 
over you go. Now just because I'm at war doesn't have to mean that I remain at war, and 200 gold and a couple of luxuries to make peace with the Mayans means that I can just take a break and level up a little bit, get my cities onto good health, get a bit of army, because at the moment I've only got a single anti-tank crew core. Not really enough to wreck the Mayans, it just gives me time. I think Greece and Coupe, they are going to be my two better targets anyway. And lovely Coupe City has arrived with me as well. That is lovely stuff, and I will treat myself to a trader. Actually, one thing I do really want are bombards. So drill manuals, you're going to go in there for now. I've got enough coal to last me about 7 million years, but my nitre supply, not as good. So we'll see what we can do about that one. Oh, look at that, Kyoto. That is a good route now. Six food, five production, ten gold, seven science, five culture, one faith. Beautiful. These are the sort of routes that we like to see. Oh, that research lab in Tokyo was worth, I would say, about 30 science. That's, oh, that's good. That is really, really good. Tokyo is doing well, really well, and I'm trying to think what would be best served. I'd like Tokyo to get happier, so I'm thinking an entertainment complex might be a good idea, and although this is a really good food tile for me, I think I'm going to replace it so that I can put it next to this theatre square, which already was on plus five adjacency. That will go to plus eight now. Lovely. Yeah, well, Greece, to be fair, you are right to worry. I am declaring war on you. <laughs> okay, here we go. Advanced flight. That's a very well-timed advanced flight. I really should build an aerodrome. Really, I probably should have done this at the same time as researching the tech, but I've been building a lot of useful things. So we'll just take the slight delay on that one. We'll go rifling into refining to unlock oil and then into artillery. Artillery are very good siege weapons. And as you can see, I have backup. Let's just quickly, I mean, our Ma says it wants to fight me. Don't take that too seriously. I don't think it will. But my ironclads at sea are going to do a lovely bunch of damage. And here come my anti-tank crews as well. And there is Ada Lovelace. Okay, she's going to go straight to Kyoto, and I'm going to be building a lot of districts here now to make all of my traders even better. We're already up to 800 science per turn, but we can make that. We can make that a lot better. So much better. I've just picked up mobilization. That gives me one more governor, uh, as well as mass media will do the same thing. What do I put my governor on? I think we're going to go Black Marketeer. Now, if I can get an encampment sorted in Kyoto, which let me tell you now, won't take long to do. Actually, I'm just just throwing another trader into this city just to boost it up a little bit now. But yeah, another district of three in this city will just massively increase the ability for the city to grow and an encampment is a really good way of starting that off. A one attack, a two attack, followed by three attack. Don't worry, the siege equipment is coming. I had to bring my original siege tower down from the north because I've made it obsolete with medics. Which is a bit frustrating. I always like the thought process of that. It's like you don't need to build siege engines anymore. They are totally siege towers, I should say. It's totally obsolete. Like no one uses this sort of stuff. And it's like, no, no, the person I'm fighting absolutely does still use walls. I, I need this and I need it quick. The industrial era. Now I'm gonna be in a golden age by a long way, and hopefully, yeah, everyone else is gonna be in the dark age. Well, just the Mayans are. But that is really good for me. I have an absolute ton of campuses. So I'm going to use Heartbeat of Steam. It lets me build wonders quicker, but it also turns my campus adjacency into production. That's a big deal for me. Like, I have a lot of campus adjacency. I'm playing as Japan. I mean, we'll just roll with it. James Young, oh, reveals oil. Unfortunately for him, I have just done the very same, and I realized I was going to put a district down on that desert tile, and the oil has just appeared already. Ah, that would have been a really good plus seven theater square, I think. Oh, well, you live and you learn. I always try not to put districts down if I'm building a wonder, because sometimes it can get a little bit sticky and the wonder won't restart and, you know, you forget about it and all this sort of stuff. But alas, that would have been just good to do. Never mind. James Young just reveals oil for us naturally, though, and that's pretty good. And as you say, oil, there's a lot of oil that's been discovered. Some in the sea. Gee, there's going to be a lot in the sea. We've got a Colosseum on top of one source of it. That's going to be one very oily Colosseum. One, two, three. Knossos is mine. Here is the aerodrome. 
all of my gold is now going to go into bombers. Five era score for doing the first one, but this is 110 bombard strength and I can disintegrate a wall in one hit, so I shall. Actually, I say all of my gold, not quite all of my gold. I did have a market there that I really, really want to buy a trader with. I'll have to do that next turn. I'm running out of people to trade with. Actually, no, no, it's still, it's still possible. Every now and then you get something. Big Ben, I could have bought the bomber this turn rather than last turn and got 50% of the gold added to it, but ultimately we've reached the point of the game now where it's all about speed. You can save up for a gold in your treasury if you want, not going to make a difference, it really won't. The economic policy slot though, that will make a difference. That is very very handy because it's economic policy slots. These are the ones I've been meaning to put a lot of extra stuff into my empire with. For now I'm gonna go with liberalism. This is another 19 amenities being put into my territory. I've actually got an ecstatic city from that as well. Which city is that? Yokib. Okay cool but more importantly is Tokyo ecstatic now. Oh it's very close. All right, finishing it up on things like zoos and aquariums. We'll get there very soon. And ideology, oh, ideology is such a good one for us. And we're still settling, by the way. We don't need to be settling, but we are. Just keeping those trade routes coming in, keeping the harbors being built, or sometimes even commercial hubs. I'll always build a commercial hub if it's a better option because I prefer great merchants than great admirals. I think they have better longevity into the game but you know you can go either way on that one at this point on turn 171 we go rocket tree and you could go satellites into nanotechnology if you'd like we said we wanted to get to rocket tree by about turn 180 so this is pretty good there's a merchant that gives me extra gold from trade routes to my own cities which is really really good 0.5 gold the trade routes to specialty districts at the destination so I think that's probably put about two and a half gold on every trade route, something like that. Kyoto, oh look at that, Kyoto is now building the encampment. So we'll get that encampment sorted, then I'll make up for a little bit of lost ground by making a plus six theatre square. We could have got a plus seven over there, but you know, what are you going to do? And then we'll put an entertainment square there. And bam, go the walls. Lovely. One attack, two attacks. About 12 population city is mine. Oh, and it has a water park on it and everything. Lovely. In comes the siege tower. And suddenly my very retro technology can help to hit through Sparta's walls, which I find very funny. Like so. One attack and then, oh, foreign ministry. Yeah, okay, it doesn't matter. It's not even my unit, so we'll just keep attacking. But we're just using the weight of numbers here. Especially whilst we wait for my bombers to fly over. I think I can afford a second now. Where are you? Yes, I am. Here we go. A one strike on Sparta, like so. And I think my anti-tank crew uh, cores can get through very quickly here. Oh, I can't quite get the kill. That's a bit unfortunate, but never mind. <laughs> if I had Bologna's musket still, I would have done that nicely. But they flipped away right at the last minute, which was very frustrating. But what can you do? So on 173, by the way, when I went over a thousand science per turn, very, very handy. Only 157 coming in from Tokyo as well, so we're starting to spread that science out a lot. And two envoys into Armar as well means that I now own every city-state on the map. Quite an achievable thing if you play the guide through like this. So there is Sparta taken, and we'll do one bombing run on Argos and a second. There we go, the walls are totally gone now, and we can take that city at the same time. This is what warfare with a technological advantage looks a little bit like. It's very satisfying. Well, one thing I would always advise, and is something I often forget to do, is upgrade your medics to supply convoys. These increase the speed of the surrounding units by one, as well as providing them even more healing than before. Like, it's a really good combo. Look at these traders getting better and better and better and better as Kyoto makes more and more districts. It's now got seven food, six production, 17.5 gold, nine science, seven culture. And I have 23, 24 of those routes. It'll do. It'll do. So now that I've got ideology, we have to pick up a new card, which is five year plan. I like that card a lot. Liberalism is doing really good for me. I'm going to get rid of invention briefly and pick up economic union. This is a really good card. Commercial hubs, harbors. Everything gives me more adjacency now, so we'll get a bunch more gold from that. And let's get logistics. Extra movement, it helps me move units around my own land, and it helps siege equipment fire and move on the same turn, if it's in your own territory. 
always a handy thing. Athens takes one direct hit and then a second. Oh, I didn't actually think I'd be able to finish it off this turn, but I believe I can. There's Greece, taken out in about six turns or so. A very, very effective little war. I think the next we want to do is to go to Coupe, but we're going to need a bit of an army for that one. So whilst these units come and sort of get themselves sorted, my bombers will fly over pretty quickly. And Jokib will treat me to a tank army. I shouldn't need too many of these. A couple will do. Now in terms of governments, you've got a couple of choices. I would say either fascism, if you need the plus five combat strength to back up, or communism, because communism gives you more science, more production, and also two production and four food from all domestic traders. That's the one I'm gonna go for today. But I mean, honestly, at this stage, you've won the game, and really it's kind of just picking how you want to win the game. And there is communism. We're gonna have a lot of extra science and a lot of extra production from this. Quite a few extra policy cards as well. We've lost a diplomatic policy card, I believe. We wanted to put colonial officers back in, probably? I think it's better than mercantile legacy. I was only getting 35 gold per turn from that one. So yeah, we're gonna go for that, but actually no, collectivization. Let's pick up this one. 100 extra food and 50 extra production from all of my 25 domestic trade routes. That's a good, good combo. We'll throw in levy on mass, and I think I'm going to throw in something along the lines of total war for extra pillaging. Four, eight, ten, twelve government policy slots. That's all of the wonders kicking in with an eight yield government. It's really, really good. Professional sports now, aquatic centers, stadiums. This will push me up to being ecstatic everywhere. Colonial wartime with coupe. It's a pretty easy thing to do. I mean, they've got a six population city without walls on our border. So I'm gonna use one bomber just to fly over and to kill a unit, which means that my tank army can now just almost sail in unopposed. I will just strike it with a bomber to do the damage and then move in. But yeah, my steel walls even will now reinforce the city beyond any ability for coupe to take it back, so. Yeah, it's pretty good so far. Opango is the next target. I think this is stronger walls. Yeah, Renaissance walls on that city. It's pretty tough. I'm actually fairly impressed, but I don't think it's going to stop us. Uh, oh no, actually I might need to land there and then take my second tank in. Yeah, look at that. Two bombers, two tank armies. We're taking a city every turn at the moment. Look at how good these routes are now. Look at that, 12 food, eight production, 20 gold, 10 science, eight culture, one faith. Oh yeah, this is how you play economic Japan. It's, it's just so much fun. Well, Congress time. As you can see, nobody really has many points, so we're just gonna vote on the stuff that got put through last time. There's no profits available. We'll go no admirals. AI tends to vote on that one, and I'll go Islam as being stronger because it's the feed the world religion. It went through. No great writers. Ah, oh, fair enough. I guess now Greece is out of the game. I am the tourism leader, so we should probably be the ones taking those. Look at my bombers striking through. Nothing that Coupe can do about this. There is the old, that's just not the capital, is it? The capital's up to the north, but that's probably their second most industrious city. 22 population capital, that's nice. Look at that. Second to last city from Coupe now falls, and you can see I have a direct path with my bombers to their capital. They're not going to last very much longer. I don't think I'm ever going to get over these routes. Look at that. 12 food, 8 production, 20 gold, 10 science, 8 culture. Yes, yes, yes. Every captured city is just taking one at the moment. Goodbye, Coupe. It was a pleasure, but I was so technologically ahead of you, it was never going to last, was it? We finally now turn our attention back to the Mayans. Ah, lovely stuff. Remember, you don't have to take all the cities, you can just go for the capital, which is kind of what I'm gonna attempt to do here by driving around and sending my planes to sort of bomb over the top. Nanotechnology, perfect. Uh, now, basically, the best thing to do is to get yourself stealth bombers and then press giant death robots. If you kind of still need a little bit of war um, strength, I guess, that's the easiest way of pulling it through. Oh yeah, and colonial war. Sorry about this, but my science is 15 times what yours is right now, and I plan on taking advantage of that. 
Quick attack from the sea! And that city has taken, and yeah, basically it's just a staging point for my bombers at this point. Next city's taken! Perfect! I've got one more bomber to move across to the front line, so I shall, and then I think Uxmal is the next target. These defences are nowhere near as strong as the ones Coupe was managing to put up, so yeah, this won't take long. And now that Tokyo has a stadium, here is Estadio, my favourite wonder. My favourite wonder in the game, it's just too good. It really is too good. Two amenities and six culture in every single city in your empire. Oh, and another stadium in Osaka as well. We are blessed by the presence of all of this stuff. The most satisfying thing about playing this way is that you get to see all of the traders converging on one city all the time, and they're really, really fun to watch. It's uh, probably about 350 science coming in per turn just from those traders. So Oxmal is the next city along the line. That actually had a Tanky in it. Lovely wonder. Very lovely wonder for me that is the capital. As you can see, we have modern armor armies ready to strike. Actually, we have a fair few units that are ready to strike. We're going to naval attack with this modern anti tank. Then I'm going to attack with this regular tank. And then the modern armor comes in. Oh, that is so close to taking the city. And we might as well take both cities at the same time just to make a clean job of it. That is a turn 187 domination victory with so much science that we could have easily gone to space as well. I actually picked up 409 tourism, so a tourism victory also would have been fairly obtainable. Domination and science are very linked. You've got to get technologically ahead of the enemy, but if you do, then your army are always going to be so much better that actually rolling them over is just quicker than going to space, especially on a smaller map like the one we've played. You can see it wasn't until turn 110, 110, that we actually did our first strike and that is kind of the most important thing to take away from this game you're going to look for your opportunities but you need to tech up and get your economy going that first 120 turns or so focus on you do what you need to do doesn't matter if your stats are a little bit behind for a while uh, i only took the tech lead at about 100 and then again at about 120 turn 120 so really it wasn't like a crazy game for me greece continually had the culture lead i think Probably Egypt, yeah, is the one that had the faith lead. My score, again, that's where we went to war, wasn't it? So my score was pretty much at the bottom for most of that game. It's one of the things to take away from Deity. You don't need to be winning on score. You, know, you don't need to be doing anything, really, and winning anything. It's, it's late game that you come good. And look at all these wonders I built at the end of the game. Another important takeaway, I didn't build a single wonder in the first 110 turns. You don't need them. You don't need to have any strategy that ro revolves around wonders. It's 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 good if you can get them. Doesn't matter if you don't. The trick to getting a good mid game with Tokugawa is all about finding your two cities. Firstly, your capital or your Pingala city, whichever you put Pingala in, and making sure that this thing is generating for you serious science and culture. Look at that, 200 science per turn coming in just from this one city. And then secondly, it's all about building up your trading hub. Now, in previous series, I've called this trading nexus just so you can see all of the traders going to this city but this is what we're after these crazy trade routes that are basically turning every single city in my empire into something quite relevant and giving me tons of gold and culture and faith and all the good stuff actually less faith more of everything else but yeah plus one faith per turn okay well i guess that's a thing communism university of sankor a couple of great people all of these add up to some seriously good trade routes and honestly they could have got better. E-commerce would have given me another two production and five gold from all of my trade routes, and I couldn't use market economy because of international trade route penalties, but I could also have got nuclear program, which turns all of my research labs and power plants into a ton of great people points. Focus on keeping those two cities important, no, the really important ones, the trading hub and your Pingala city, Magnus and Pingala. Keep them happy, plus three immunities if you can. Ecstatic is even better, but late game is probably more sensible on that and make sure that every single one of your other cities has a trade route available to it. If I have a look down my city list you'll see that pretty much every single one has either a commercial hub or a harbour. Some have both, a couple I've just picked up have neither but pretty much they all have them and that's how I've got 34 trade routes. Keep an eye on available trade routes you can see I've got 11 cities that can still trade with Kyoto so there's more possibility here and just snowball. 
go for science. Like, look how many campuses I've got around the map. Work on getting those lovely plus four campuses as soon as you get plus four into them. And there's a couple with plus three down here that I should have improved. But most of the important ones I've been trying to get to at least plus four so that my rationalism card gives me a bunch more science. And it's worth it. Look at that. Library is 6, University 16, Research Lab 22 Science, just the buildings in that campus are providing me with 44, if my maths is right, science, and then plus 10, 54. I, yeah, just nuts. I really, really, really hope this guide works and has helped people with learning the game. Remember, do leave things in the comments if you want to ask anything about the series. I try and get back to as many as I can, but come to Discord if you can. We have a fantastic community of people learning Civ and playing it very regularly. So if you've got any questions or you want to learn anything, that's the place to come. We will help you out, no doubt. Remember to subscribe if you haven't done so. It really helps the channel out. And before I sign off, thank you all for a wonderful year. I'll see you all in the next video. See you later, goodbye! And finally, a very special shout out goes to Glorious Petra, I am Salty Tech, Matthew Wilkinson, Paul Coffey, Doughboy91, Seancrates, Portland, Scott Stratton, Major King Kong, Davalek, Skeptical Bear, Kroger Brand Trail Mix, Alex Noob, Cinnamon Beard, Petra Ryan, Matthew Hatch, Amiri C, Henry, Rom88, Radiatore, Private Selection, Genoa Salami, Boy Zorro, Callum Billy, Garrett Gowan, Polar Bear Ray, L Truand, Creston, RB Hedge, Mushkin Mandeltort, Ezri Dax. Thank you for all of your support. Cheers!